words cannot describe how hypocritical and ridiculous it is that the West, the big banks, the military industrial complex that runs our country, claimed a month ago that they didn't have any special forces in Libya and that they weren't involved in the destabilization program. Now it's been admitted for at least three weeks that British special forces and other mercenaries, not just regular government SAS, special air services, are in the country leading the groups and that yes, it is, quote, the CIA Al-Qaeda Brigade out of Saudi Arabia and Egypt. And it's in the London Telegraph, CNN, they go, oh, is it wrong that Al-Qaeda's hailing this and that Al-Qaeda's doing it? Maybe not. Al-Qaeda was good when they attacked Serbia as a pretext to start that war. Oh, look, the Serbs are being mean to the Al-Qaeda. We've got to invade and hand it over to Albania, basically. Oh, they used Al-Qaeda to attack and start the war with the Russians. Is that saying the Russians were little angels? No. The point is, the globalists are starting these wars. And now they've tried to assassinate Gaddafi in the last 24 hours with cruise missiles and bombs. That's confirmed by BBC and others. That's a violation of international law. No judge, no jury, no execution. The no-fly zone doesn't say they can try to kill Gaddafi. Notice uh, Hillary and others have said you will accept a humanitarian force, that's a ground force, or we will completely destroy you. So this is a new war, and it's part of this larger strategy of tension. And we have the U.N. with its ruling, with its resolution Thursday, ordering this launch and calling it a no-fly zone. But in the body is the language for aerial bombardments that are now on and physical invasion with two Marine Corps giant amphibious invasion ships. They're basically Marine Corps um, ground invasion command carriers. They're like stub carriers. They're about a little 60% the size of a regular uh, a carrier the Navy has. You can pull them up if you want online. Uh, their names are in the news. They're similar to the Coronado, but it's not there. That was the Coronado I watched do a drill of landing in the Bay Area of Oakland and San Francisco and disgorging U.S. Marines and foreign troops with role players screaming, I'm an American, please no, not the camp, don't take my gun. That was a big wake-up call for me in 1999. It's in my film Police Day 2000, by the way. Now, Wayne Madsen is a Washington, D.C.-based investigative journalist, author, and syndicated columnist. He's written for The Village Voice, The Progressive, Counterpunch, Online Journal, Corp Watch, uh, Multinational Monitor, News Insider, These Times, The American Conservative. His columns have appeared in the Miami Herald, Houston Chronicle, Philadelphia Inquirer, Columbus Dispatch, Sacramento Bee, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, among others. He's been all over international television, formerly with the NSA, before that in submarine uh, warfare, anti-submarine warfare, also worked for RCA Corporation. He reports from Capitol Hill and the National Press Club. WayneMadsonReport.com is the website. We're linked to it on Infowars.com. Uh, Wayne, looking at this, it's quite a precedent. We now have clearly special forces backed hitting key targets, government buildings, telecommunications in Syria. Uh, the new precedent set that if sovereign governments repel Western-backed rebels that there will then be a Western invasion. Is this the, the, the Zbigniew Brzezinski destabilization program that he wrote about three years ago? Well, I, I'll tell you, I think what, what we're seeing playing out in Libya, now also probably in Yemen, is the co-option of these Arab revolts by the CIA and their uh, allied intelligence and special uh, forces uh, units uh, in these NATO countries. Um, no one would doubt that what happened in Tunisia probably surprised a lot of people. That's then spread to Egypt. And it was clear that uh, it was bound to uh, spill over the uh, Egyptian and Tunisian border into Libya. It spread into Algeria, Morocco, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Bahrain, and other countries. But now what we're seeing play out is uh, NATO uh, launching this attack on Libya. Now, this is, this is a game changer. Uh, many in the uh, Libyan opposition did not want uh, U.S. Uh, and NATO um, uh, forces uh, in the country, but I think that there's probably now two 
uh, types of or two forms of Libyan opposition. There are those who are Libyan nationalists who just want to see Gaddafi go, and then there's the others who have been waiting in the wings in London, in Washington, and other places, waiting for this moment. And these are the groups that are probably going to want to take over with the CIA and MI6's support. Uh, and what we're going to see is uh, uh, Libya's uh, tremendous oil uh, deposits being the target uh, for these uh, uh, countries. <clears throat> now, that said, I think we also have to look at there's a huge split within NATO and the European Union. And uh, th we probably haven't seen a split like this in NATO since the 1956 invasion by Britain and France of Suez. And, uh, of course, President Eisenhower would not support that, and that created a major rift in NATO. Now we see Turkey and G Germany, uh, two large NATO countries after the United States, as far as military power is concerned, not supporting this effort. And the worst thing, the Italians are now involved, and that is the former colonial power that ruled uh, Libya. And I can't think of anything worse than having Italians participate in a uh, military adventure against Libya. That, that Benito probably... Mussolini uh, actually yes. uh, invaded, uh, for those that don't know, now they'll say he's a good guy, but for, for, for those that don't know, this will clearly now unify more Libyans behind Muammar Gaddafi. Right, and we have, of course, uh, Mussolini's ideological son, Silvio Berlusconi, now in, uh, in power in, in, in Italy, and of course he's facing all kinds of uh, legal problems, uh, messing around with hooker, uh, underage hookers and uh, the guy's mafiosi from the word go. But he's looking at this, obviously, as a chance for him to gain political points. He was basically almost on his way out. And now we see Harper in Canada providing uh, military forces for this uh, invasion of Libya. And they're saying that his poll numbers are up in, in Canada. So I'm looking at people like Sarkozy and Berlusconi and Harper trying to make political points in this. And now we had Saif al-Islam Qaddafi, uh, 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 Qaddafi's son, state that Sarkozy's presidential campaign was bankrolled by Libyan money. Now that brings up the whole thing with the Clearstream uh, uh, bank accounts, uh, uh, Sarkozy being funded from uh, money outside of France. And uh, he went after uh, Dominique de Villepin, tried to put him in jail for, for slander. Uh, and now it looks like probably uh, what de Villepin and the others in the Chirac government were saying about Sarkozy was true. This guy was the first guy to run to Gaddafi and meet him in Libya. And now he's the first one to launch uh, French uh, warplanes against Libya. So we're we seeing a lot We also have the EU head, Herman von Rumpy, just a few months ago embracing Gaddafi. You have the British government uh, embracing him, uh, selling him most of his weapons. Is this an attempt to go ahead and kill Gaddafi so that he won't use all of his blackmail on them? Well, I think so. He's obviously got uh, you know a lot of information about uh, what's been going on behind the scenes. Uh, just like Saddam Hussein had a lot of information about some of some of these uh, leaders of these Western countries, and, uh, and and obviously the the launch of the cruise the Tomahawk that hit his compound in Tripoli, where I, I actually was in October of 2009. There's a, a monument there to the Reagan uh, attack against Gaddafi, where his daughter was killed in 1986. And, and uh, that's a violation of Executive Order 12333, which prohibits uh, the assassination of foreign leaders. Of course, we've violated that so many times times over the years uh with the you know the insane uh and uh and, and 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 there's been other covert operations against other world leaders that haven't gotten as much uh publicity uh over the years but um now, now we see a group in congress De democrats and republicans saying look obama went to the u.n he went to nato but he never went to congress to get authorization for this act uh, action and uh, there's one Democrat, apparently, who's uh, uh, apparently um, uh, willing to uh, put forward uh, articles of impeachment yeah. against uh, President Obama. Wayne Madsen, l let me stop you right there, because that's the big issue I've been making since last Thursday. No statements, no even resolution, much less a uh, declaration of war, which we haven't had since World War II. Now we're seeing nothing from Congress within 24 hours of the U.N., Voting for a no-fly zone, it turns into a bombardment with British news reporting 
that SAS smash squads are on the ground in Libya to mark targets for coalition jets. Uh, the rebels arrested a bunch of SAS, as you know, two weeks ago that embarrassed everybody. Uh, clearly, they waited till the rebels uh, were backed up in a corner so that they would have to accept uh, Western intervention. Uh, what's the larger strategy in all of this? Why do you think this came together so fast? Does it play into the trillion-dollar nuke industry desperately needing a distraction from the radioactive clouds still drifting this way? Oh, wow. It hasn't been interesting the last couple of weeks with the way the news cycle has gone. First, we had a massive coverage of the Arab Revolt. Then we had the earthquake, tsunami, and the nuclear uh, disaster in Japan. And now we're back to Libya. So, uh, you know, it's, it, the, the news media, the corporate media, uh, only goes for the news of the day. And then other major uh, news events are, are not covered. And, and I think we're seeing a lot of that play out now. It's the news du jour, as I call it here in Washington. Uh, so, yeah, I think that plays a lot uh, into this a lot, that uh, the focus is, is moving away from other issues. As you said, the nuclear uh, meltdown at Fukushima uh, being, uh, being a major uh, story that's uh, not only being suppressed by the Japanese government media, TEPCO, but also I think we see a lot of the nuke industry here, the nuke lobby, uh, 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 trying to play down the uh, the, the, the yeah. safety effects of that so so I think a, a lot of the, these this this news is intertwined uh, and 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 the, the the gatekeepers the corporate news gatekeepers are trying to have it their own way and how they report these uh, these breaking stories Wayne, I want to get more into the unfolding crisis still having trouble getting those reactors under control more gas explosions more off gassing uh, unfolding today Japanese still talking about a, a, a Chernobyl option of just burying the reactors. I want to get into Ann Coulter saying radiation's good for you. Uh, that's the actual headline. But before we go there, uh, why do you think Obama went with this to strengthen global governance, to strengthen the corporate state through the U.N., to totally cut Congress out of the loop? What's the constellation, the cocktail of reasons that they engaged in this naked uh, act, you know, lying and saying he'd raced to Venezuela, he'd gone to Zimbabwe, saying he'd strafed crowds. Turns out that isn't true. I mean, the point is, I'm not saying Gaddafi's a good guy, it's just that they've been lying about him. And now we have giant Marine Corps and Navy amphibious invasion carriers off the coast, uh, and the resolution. And Hillary's also said this that if he doesn't accept a humanitarian ground force, that means an armed force, that there will be an invasion. So they pretty much stated the ground invasion right there. We've got Gaddafi handing out over a million firearms preparing to uh, for guerrilla warfare. Right, and I think what this shows is that Obama is no different than his predecessor when it comes to these coalition uh, coalitions of the willing that we saw this play out in Iraq we saw pl play out in Afghanistan and, and here we see it playing out again um, look uh, uh, there were no vetoes in the UN Security Council but it, it was to establish a no-fly zone uh, now we even have the Arab League that supported uh, no-fly zone saying wait a minute we weren't talking about launching cruise missiles and killing civilians which we have many reports now that many civilians were killed by these NATO strikes on Libya. So they parade out a couple of countries, a uh, few uh, Air Force planes from Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. Big deal. We don't see, where, where's Egypt in this whole uh, operation? Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 Obama is a neocon. His advisors are neocons. They, he can call himself a Democrat till the cows come home, but the foreign policy of Obama is no different than the foreign policy of George W. Bush. What about He's this still, precedent? What about this precedent, Wayne? We've got limited time here. I, I, hopefully you can stay a little bit in the next hour so we can take calls. Sure. But what about the precedent being set here where any time there's an uprising in a country and if the nation crushes them in any way, then there's got to be a U.N.-ordered invasion, but then the, there's the hypocrisy of the West crushing and killing demonstrators. This has happened in England at G20. And other events, there's the specter of cops shooting people in the back. Uh, there's the specter of, of uh, you know, the similar things. On the heels of the hypocrisy energized, the illustration energized and highlighted by U.S. Army kill team in Afghanistan posed for photos of murdered civilians, including little bloody dead children 
with the, quote, kill teams, as Private Gruckheimer first revealed eight years ago, that they're ordered to go into villages and kill babies and everyone.